So I'm entitling this uh, post uh, in defense of Yvette and Irony. Actually, as they say in Chicago, I'm perpetrating a bit of a fraud because obviously Yvette and Irony do not need a uh, defense. They can defend themselves rather well, breaking Brown family. Anyway, um, uh, but they bring up certain things. Um, if you've been following, I'll, I'll, I'll put a post, I'll, I'll, I'll rather I'll, I'll put a, in the program notes, I'll put a, a composition I wrote uh, to explain sort of uh, what they've been talking about. Uh, they, they're, they're advocating a, a black politic. I mean, a real black politic, which we don't have, obviously, because if we did have it, then we wouldn't be in the soup that we're in. Anyway, so I want to take certain uh, points in my life to explain black politics or how, how it works, okay? Let's start in fourth grade, right? We're talking like, what, 1959, something like that? Yeah. In fourth grade, what happened was they start tracking some of us. Uh, the people we, they started tracking was us people who have uh, what we call uh, reading comprehension. I guess that's what it was. We, uh, you know, it was kind of strange because in the Patterson Project, you know, in the South Bronx at the time, you know, you couldn't really uh, be uh, smart because, well, some people were smart, but but you would be, um, 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 I guess you call these days bully, but you'd be picked on at school, right? Yeah, anyway, um, so I, I was a reader, but I was like down low kind of thing, you know, because that's how other people get treated, but I just made like I was, you know, I was cool anyway. But the point is, they started tracking us in fourth grade. When we got to uh, junior high school, I went to, um, uh, um, Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, that's my high school. I went to Clark Junior High School 149 in the South Bronx. No longer exists, they changed the school system. Anyway, in that school we had everything that, that we needed, but what they did, um, there was, uh, you had like, like, like the, the, the class, like, this class, like, say, seventh grade weeks, seven one, seven two, and all the way to like 715, 725. And the higher the number, the dumber you, well, the more challenging were educationally, right? Uh, so eighth grade, same thing. Ninth grade, same thing. You know, nine, one, nine, two, like that. Um, I, so what, what, what happened? What happens? They took us that they've been tracking since uh, since elementary school, and they put us in like like in seventh grade. It was like seven, seven, and seven, eight. I was in seven, eight, uh, and uh, and eighth grade was eight, seven, and eight, eight. I was in eight, eight, and then in in, in ninth grade. We went to with, with the smart people, you know. <laughs> so it was like nine one and nine two. I think I was a nine two. I forget. Anyway, I might be not. No, anyway. But the point really is that when we got out of junior high school, they've been tra tracking us. Then we had an offer. To, well, I was supposed to go to. Um, I took the test. I was supposed to go to mechanics, but like Garbage. Garbage is like a, a, a automotive school kind of thing. I think. I think uh, Stanley Cooper got graduated from Garbage. Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, and, and, and the academic school in, in my area was um, was um, a Morris High School, um, right by where I was actually, right, in the Morris Senior section of, of the Bronx. I was in the Mount Haven section of the Bronx. So that was the closest academic school I was supposed to go to. But because they tracked us and they put us, they started a thing called College Discovery. They took us, those kids in 9192, and they sent all, some of us, and they sent us all the way up to Fordham Road. So I ended up being in Theodore Roosevelt High School. You know, academic school. This now, this is like totally integrated. School. Not totally. It, when I told it was like a lot of white people at the school. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, but anyway, so so uh, so when we so when we graduated um, high school, we had a choice. I mean, we we could like go to any school. I think like I I was supposed to go to either like Lincoln or even Fordham University, which was right across the street. Or anyway, I chose for some strange reason. I chose Bronx Community College. So I went to Bronx Community College. Well, here's where it gets interesting. So, that, so you see the politic of the, they started tracking us. So you know that was sort of like I don't know. I want to area. I don't know what kind of politics it was, but we I got into this program. Okay. And we, oh, and so also the the uh, college discovery was a precursor to a thing they finally uh, institute called Seek. Seek was just like a more well, Seek. There's that, free free college for uh, the previously disadvantaged uh, all, all over New York City. I guess it was even New York, New York State. Uh, Okay, so at Bronx Community College, interesting times. Now, when I at Bronx Community College, well, uh, I became part of a, uh, like a, it was a revolutionary cell. Okay, there was three men, three women, and it was led by these two brothers that had been to Vietnam. Okay, uh, Bobby and Billy Shepard. Uh, they went on to do film work 
Okay. So what was interesting about our group, we were studying, you know, the, you know, the, the red book, the, the, the little black book, you know, you know, uh, uh, Jay, you know, uh, Fanon, the whole, the whole thing, you know. Uh, of course, everybody was doing Malcolm anyway. Uh, so, but, but the interesting thing is that, so we were having a good time, but I'm a little revolutionary, revolutionary so really, we, it was three men, three women, like I said, three boys, three girls, we were so, we were equal. There wasn't that, what was going on like uh, with, with, with the Panthers and, not just the Panthers, but other groups where, you know, the women would go do, to get the coffee, whatever, do the stand, whatever it is. No, we were just equal, we were just, just like a study group. Okay, so we were minding our own business, we were having a good time. And then what happened? I think that was like 19, end of 68 I was there, 1960, no, it must have been the end of, whenever it was, 68, 69, when, when, when the school, when uh, San Francisco State College, you know, uh, they started taking over the school, Yale, uh, uh, Columbia, of course, everybody knows Columbia, um, uh, City College, uh, Bronx Community College, we all, at the same time, these schools being taken over by the students so demanding certain things. Now, we, we were demanding uh, 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 black lecturers, you know, black, black professors, whatever, and also black studies. Right? Um, now, because we were revolutionary cell, we was like we were feeding information. We were like a, let's call it the brain trust for this larger group called Simba. Okay, so what happens when we took over school? All of a sudden, we all of a sudden like you know we had to take positions of responsibility. You know, nobody knew who we were. Well, they knew who we were, but I mean, you know, we, we were like down low. But now we had to pop up. So we took over the school, and this is my first thing with communications. Right? And so I was in charge of the, the, uh, the switchboard, you know, the old time switchboard, you plug it in, you know, no, 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 switch like that. Well, I was in charge of that. So students came to, to um, you know, to a person to switch, switchboard, the man the switchboard. And so everything was going good. But I remember this one, one white guy came in there and he was like cursing at people. I said, whoa, 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 we don't do that here. And I kicked him out, right? And so, you know, the, the, the line was, uh, the, um, uh, like, hello, this is Bronx Community College. The school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. And then you disconnect, unless they, or you just listen to them and then they'll say something. They say, this is Bronx Community College. This school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone like that. Well, it's just, it's just, well, I, let me put it to cut to the choice, chase with this one. The, 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 the Bronx DA called, and because I was in charge of the, the room, whatever the situation, they said, well, the Bronx people's going to say, so I got on the phone. Ah, good afternoon. This is Bronx Community College. The school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. Who is this? This is Bronx Community College. This school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. Well, this guy was going, you could, you could feel the red or whatever, you know, just boiling this guy. Said, Who are you? Are you a young whippersnapper? He didn't say whippersnapper, he said some other things. How? Blah, 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 blah. I said, they said, Who are you? I said, Santa Claus, and I just disconnected. Okay, so anyway, that. That's that, that was a politic, okay? Because th then when uh, when this, the thing died down, well, uh, actually, let's put it this way: it got kicked. Somehow, I got kicked out of school. Let's put it that. But however, we did get about uh, Roscoe Brown. We did get uh, not at the first, not he's not the first um, chancellor, whatever you call it, of Brown Boston College, the head of the college. But you know, they started to get black stuff in. So that was a, a victory, if you want to say. The next thing, let's let's uh, let's uh, let's move on, okay? Uh, when um, uh, at the time there was a, a, a lottery for going to Vietnam, you know, you, you were drafted. Everybody had to go. You know, now in my neighborhood in South Bronx, it didn't matter what your number was because they did it by your, you know, they put your birthday in a little thing, and then it was 365. If you was 365, maybe you wouldn't go. However, in my neighborhood, it didn't matter what neighbor, what what number you was because like there was a lot of you know a lot of young cats and still at that early day still in jail or whatever 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 well my number was like something like 160 115 so i knew i was going to go right so i had this brilliant idea at the time i thought it was brilliant uh i didn't want to go to to the um to the army because they were just like you know go you go to fort dix boot camp and then like six weeks later you were in jungles of vietnam fighting some you know 13 year old that you had no beef with you know Okay, in, in the Marines, okay, they're, they're, their motto is they're go, go, kill them, whatever their motto is. Yeah, so he, he was going there too. The Navy, my brother was a merchant marine. Well, he did the merchant marine thing. He said, no, I don't think he want to be on the ship. Because, you know, think of it as a floating island, which is like, like 15,000 or you know, whatever, you know, 1,500 uh, people. And most of them are like rednecks, you know. And so my brother survived. Well, he wasn't in the, in the Navy, but he was in the Mexican Marine. But he said, but well, basically, he just acted crazy and they just left him alone. So I didn't think that was the Navy was a good thing for me. 
Um, so I said, oh, because you have to take a test for the Navy, you have to take a test for the Air Force. So I said, the Air Force, I take the test, you know, and what's the model for the Air Force? Keep them flying, keep them flying. Which means you didn't have to, you know, you wouldn't be, you know, in the thick of battle. I'm saying, ah, let me do my four years in the Air Force, and I'm gone, right? So I said, just took the test for the Air Force, you know, passed it, and I was off, you know, to the Air Force. Well, interestingly enough, at that time period, there was a whole lot of smarter people than me that thought the same thing. So, consequently, Air Force at that time, we're talking about from, say, 1970, anyway, it was from 68, 70, until, you know, to the end of the war, the smartest people, or the dudes, the smartest dudes on the planet were in the Air Force, and they weren't necessarily, like in my, when I went, I became a lab technician, I'll tell you how I got that, it was just politics. At the time, you know, like we have people that are like master students and you know PhDs in science and whatever. I said, well, aren't you supposed to be an officer? You're, you're a college graduate. They said, oh no, you don't have to be an officer. You know, you don't have to fly. You can be anything. You know, I said, wow, well, that's interesting. Okay, so here I'm in the Air Force. Everybody's worried about you know what their job is going to be. But you know, um, when we first got there, you know, everybody, you know, they cut, give you a haircut, or whatever have you. Well, here's another political thing. So when we got back from the barber or whatever happened, I went to the barracks and I said, ah, I don't like this. So I shaved my head, you know, just you know, I threw it up and shaved it bald, right? And so some other brothers said, hey, hey, so they start to shave their head too. Okay, so we, we, we have a smoke break. These are those area where you, you smoke. And we did chilling, smoking break, you know, like that. And now in the Air Force, in boot camp, whatever you want to call it, that would be called, cool, whatever we called it. Anyway, you usually you had two sergeants. You had you had the you had the, the well, you had two sergeants that were in charge. I think you had a first sergeant and another sergeant. You know, it's like good cop, bad cop. Well, the good let's call it the good cop. This good sergeant came to our area. And, oh, no, no, Eddie's fellows, Eddie's fellows. You know, like a smoke break. And he says, "Let me tell you a little story." And he says, uh, uh, "In Spain, I was in Spain one time, and this guy, he." Uh, he got drunk and he laid out on the beach and he got sunburned. I said, whoa, he got sunburned. And he made a choice, he made a choice, he said, this is a white guy. So we all listen, okay, where is this going? He says, and you know, he got court martialed. He got court martialed because he damaged government property. In other words, when you say you're a GI, GI means government property. So him getting a sunburn means that he damaged government property. So, so basically, this, she was saying, well, when you shaved your head, that's government, you know, this is government property. You know, if you did damage, I said, well, we're just looking like that. We're still, like, bewildered. He says, um, now, I just want to know, is this some sort of movement or something like that? And we're going, we're looking at each other, no, I, and, and it, it's still like everybody's looking at me. So it's, some of the guys said, so slow. I got to go like, well, no, you see, Sarge, it was like this, you know. I just didn't. I mean, I, I didn't like the haircut, so I just shaved my head, and I didn't, I can't speak for the other fellas. I mean, you know, like, and he says, oh, okay, okay, everything's all right. You know, that's just this more to know. We're just starting moving because there's a lot of stuff happening out there. So I said, okay, fine, all right. So we left, and like, whew, like that. Okay, cut to another chase. Now, so we have, we have about, what was it, six weeks, whatever it was for, for boot camp. And... Um, and, and, and as we're, uh, we get our assignments, like I didn't care what I was going to be. I was going to be, a, I think they made me, I was going to be an aeromedical specialist, something like that. That means I'm a flying nurse, right? I didn't care. <laughs> so I was going to do my four years and get out. Everybody worried about am I going to be, whatever they, I wasn't caring about that. Like the day before we, you know, graduate or move on to our next duty station, our next, uh, of course, yeah, our next phase two training, not phase two training, whatever, our training for whatever is going to be, air medical specialist. Uh, this was down in, in, in Lackland, was, and my duty station was going to be uh, Shepherd Air Force Base in by Fort Worth, not Fort Worth, yeah, Fort, whatever up there, Fort Worth, in Texas, it was also in Texas. So I'm walking, you know, under the awning, you know, the, the officer is right there, and the captain jumps out, and he literally curses me out, you know, blah, 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 and keeps on, keeps on going. I'm looking like that. The, the fellas over there, they'll come to me. Sloan, what happened? What'd you do? I said, I don't know. I had no idea. I didn't do it. I realized years later, see, in, in the military, if whatever happens, you know, your, your superiors are in charge of you. So by me shaving my head and them thinking it was like a militant movement, this bes bespotted this captain's record, I guess. So he was like, 
I was the culprit. But they must have told him, don't you dare bother this soldier. But he had to get it out right before I graduated. He had to do something like that. So that was the, so that's, that's politics, okay? Let me go to the next biggest politics. How about the Air Force? When I went to, um, uh, to uh, uh, a Shepherd Air Force base, uh, uh, we, um, like I was supposed to be Air Medical Special, so I was waiting for, we was waiting for our orders to, to go. And, and, and uh, one time, I won't go into the what they called a bunch of us into the office, right? And I was one of the people, and I'm looking around, I was like, oh, these are all like black people, there's like a Mexican over there, I would like to call us like, like minorities. He says, you're, you've been reassigned. I'm like, okay, oh, I don't care. You're going to be lab technicians. No lab school, blah, blah, blah. And they, you know, we're supposed to go to different, different places. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to Ohio. What's interesting, now, the reason this happened was that because the NWCP and them uh, were, were putting pressure on the military to say, you've got to start giving these, these um, um, you know, black people, well, minorities at the time, they give these minorities better jobs. So uh, the lab, your job, the longer your school, that was the, the better job. So in other words, like in the medical field, the longer school was, I think, the technicians that, that do the machines, that was like a year and a half when it was. The second longer school was like nine months. That was lab technicians. That was a really good, good, good career, good job. So off I go. So here we go. The politics of, of now that the, the of, first of all, the uh, the politics that we did let's, to get the uh, lecturers in Boston City College, that's one kind of politics. The politics of the a, a, a riots in the streets, NAACP, whatever have you, that got me from being that onto, you know, onto, a, a, onto being a lab technician. Okay, great. Now, now we get to another thing. So I do my Air Force. I get out of Air Force. Just as I'm getting out, I, 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 um, I started taking extension courses, and, and, uh, and I ended up being in McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. That's what I won't tell you all the politics that happened with that, which was also extraordinary. However, uh, when, when I'm, I, I'm like the, the couple of months before I got out, I said, I, I'm going to go to I'm going to, I knew I was going to go back to school, to, to, to school. I was doing theater anyway, so I wanted to go to school for theater. I'm going to get to that point. Anyway, so I went to this place called Livingston College. It's part of Rutgers University. Rutgers had campuses in Newark and in New Brunswick and, and also in, uh, I think, Trenton. Uh, but maybe it didn't. Anyway, so, 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 so the main hubs were in, were in New Brunswick. So Livingston was like the experimental school. Think of, um, think of like California had Berkeley, I think New York had like Stony Brook or something like that. These like radical, radical schools, but Livingston was like an experimental school. Now I gotta tell you this tiny, tiny story. When I went to, I was still in the Air Force, I was sitting there in the admissions office, ready, ready to go there. Now this was uh, 19, well this was 73 when this, is this like December or November? December, something like that, at 73, I was going to, I was supposed to be admitted, uh, I was going to be admitted in January of 74. Okay, when I got out the Air Force, like a week later, I was going to be admitted. Okay, great. So I'm here waiting outside the admissions office, and there's this, like, swinging door over there. On the other side of here, this guy said, what? You don't know me? I'll burn this, we'll burn this mother down. I'm going like, whoa. And this guy was talking to the dean. I'm going like, Whoa, my kind of school. This was interesting. And what happened was uh, black students were protesting, and they, what, they, what they protested, they had a championship basketball team at that time. And they got onto the court and stopped the game and protesting them to certain things, whatever it is. And these were mostly black, these were mostly students from Livingston College. Okay, so anyway, so I get into Livingston College, no problem. And as I'm coming in, they have a new, well, this dean, this, this guy was talking, this guy, uh, Emmanuel Mescaline, or you know, something like I call him Mescaline, it doesn't matter. Uh, but he, he, was, he came from the Rand Corporation. Here's where it gets really tricky. This guy, he must have been assigned to dismantle the college. The Livingston College was incredibly radical. Let me put it this way. Uh, a, a lot of the teachers uh, didn't have like degrees or whatever have you. Like you have people like uh, uh, Hattie Gossett, uh, 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 Pepsi Charles, my favorite teacher, you know. You, 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 have, you have people like um, like A.B. Spellman, you know, we did that, um, like Tony Morrison taught at the school. Bunch of these, this, this radical, my, my favorite te uh, teacher, Doug Evans, he came from Antioch, you know. Anyway, he's in communications department. So it ends up, uh, 
that uh, we had, um, when we knew that they were really just men doing it, we had incredible jam players, we had an incredible jazz program. Uh, Larry Ridley was there, that's when the school with James Spaulding, like these incredible, that's where I saw, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of musicians, uh, like all kinds of musicians, jazz, big time jazz musicians came to the, our school to do a little job teaching, whatever it is. Anyway, I digress, let me get back. Um, so, um, so we did this, uh, the, when we knew this was, was happening, we, we, we uh, a group of, here's the thing, the students and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, and the teachers were all together. It wasn't this separation, you know? So we had this thing to, to protest how, what they were doing to Little College, basically dismantling Little College. So we were meeting our students and, and, and people like Francis, we had a meeting, like um, uh, Avery Brooks is one of the people that were teaching at the time. So he was there. Okay, so we had this, uh, we were doing this thing, the, uh, the funeral for Livingston College, it was going to be a big demonstration, right? Like we invited, we invited the um, gospel choir to join or whatever, but they said no, they weren't getting involved. But this thing was so huge that they stopped the rehearsal, they, everybody joined in, this is an amazing thing. And we did this whole funeral procession for Livingston College to protest what um, uh, this dean was doing to, to the college. That's another politics. But also remember the politics of the, the, let's call it the system. This is 1974 now. The system has finally caught up to, you know, this whole thing was happening in the 60s, whatever have you, and was trying to dismantle it. What's extraordinary about this college is they would, they would actually go to the pool halls in Newark to recruit people. You know, they would go to, you know, really down into the so-called ghetto to get people to go to this college. That I'm always wondering why, why, why did they, and this was all over the, all over the country where they were like eliminating these black students and stuff like that. And I realized, it didn't come to like a, a couple of years ago, I realized with so many um, students do, um, black students do, uh, do coming through, uh, that now they were in the act, in, in what they call the academy. So they could do their research and they could actually, you know, provide the community, you know, if they were still in the community, with, with, with data and statistics and whatever have you to deal with the circumstances, which brings me to what uh, Yvette and Irene are doing, what you know, what 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 Antonio Moore with Tone Talks is doing. They're giving us data. They're actually giving us an education. You see, Big, um, you know, they're, they're hooking up like people like like, like mentioned Sandy Darity all the time. These folks who know, you know, who uh, who have credentials. You know, um, yeah, I went for a long time. You know, I went to uh, First World Alliance, where you had, you know, uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, and you know. Um, the, the whole the, the whole thing, you know, ben, Dr. Ben, you know, I invested in who taught who taught at Rutgers at the time I was there. Um, all kinds of people. My favorite, James Small. I love James. Anyway, um, so you know, they would, every week they would give a lecture and it was really uh, amazing. You know, Amos Wilson. Uh, I, I can go on. You know, but Francis Wilson came through. Everybody came through. I mean, even even uh, Neely Fuller came through at one, one particular point earlier. But the point I'm trying to ex explain is that uh, you get your education where it is, but when you start getting so where they have to pay attention to you because you have credentials, that's what's, that's what's really, really interesting. Now, what's, what's good about what, our, our, what Yvette and I are doing is that now, remember why I said we st I started out in a revolutionary cell at uh, Bronx Community College. Well, here's the way I look at things. You know, you could lead by this, you know, think of a slinky, you know, you know, you lead by that pyramid with somebody's on top and then they, like that, or you can do the slinky toy thing where that that, that top person is another way you can do it, where you know just it goes down and the, the top person actually on the bottom and, and, and giving information there. You can go do a spiral, you know, with the person in the middle and you like that. I like this thing I'll call a cell uh, because but you have to have a nucleus, you have the cytoplasm, and you have the cell wall. Cell wall protects everything. The cytoplasm has you know stuff you need. So, but the nucleus, when they need something, they get from the cytoplasm. So what happens? Is you is what we call it in theater. You know, oh, I don't know, I have a theater background. We have a, we call it a, a need specific. So if you need you know if you need this kind of costume, you know you, you don't draw a costume uh, costuming in if you if you're programming you're not using costumes in the program. So it's need specific. So what, uh, what I look at uh, let's let's not call it a revolutionary cell. What what Army and 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 Yvette are doing, let's call it an evolutionary cell, where they're creating a virtual cell with all of us like that. That are, that, are, that are paying attention to subscribe to her, to them. And so what happens is their cell is their cell. Now other people can duplicate that cell they want for their policy, right? but it doesn't affect our cell. They can do, so you can have the Black Lives Matter doing what they're doing, you can have NAACP doing what they're doing, some you know, radical group over there doing what they're doing, whatever. but you know, um, if, if the cell is not good, you know what I mean, well it doesn't affect 
your your evolutionary self. You get it? That's what's so. I, that's what's fascinating about well, well, but what's going on in the, with this virtual world. What's going on in the world today? I'm sitting here in South Africa, and I'm creating some stuff. I'm gonna get to right now. I'm here with my research group down at the So, but my point is. You know, it doesn't matter what they do because we all are getting information from a lot of sources and, and, and Yvette and Irony and Antonio are giving us, you know, information that, that, that we can use in our, in our things. So that's what's important about uh, what Yvette and, and Irony are doing and, and, and important that, um, that, we, you know, that you spread the word, that, that you understand it's politics. It's the politic that gets you moving. The reason why they're they're so hard on us now is because um, because the politics that that was that was created after the civil rights movement, you know, they got bought out. They got you know, come on now, you know, it's like it's, it's happening here in South Africa. They create a middle class, middle class ignores it. They move out of the neighborhood, and there's no examples. I, 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 I won't get into all that. Anyway, this has been exhausting. I know it's been exhausting for you too. So just leave it at that. I'll, I'll post some stuff then, and at least a letter there of the composition I wrote in terms of. Um, uh, a thing that somebody didn't understand about a vet and mentoring slavery or whatever it is, I'll, I'll post it down there. Uh, I being a me, T, from the Madison's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.